But the president uh, was eager to talk, and we sat down right after they signed that agreement. So we saw you sign the agreement right in this room. You also said you just developed a special bond with Kim. Describe that bond. Well, it's been a very intense day, and as you know, we discussed things over the last few months. You did. You've spoken with yeah, him before. Yeah, I have spoken. Yes, I have spoken to him. I've spoken to a lot of his people. His, as you know, his. Uh, I would say very top person was at the White House last week. And so we've developed a pretty good relationship in terms of getting something done. It got done. I think it's a terrific document. It's a starter, but it's a terrific document. I think far more. And there are things that we negotiated after that document that are also very important. Like uh, they're what? going to get rid of certain ballistic missile sites and various other things. We're going to put that out later. But we have the framework of getting ready to denuclearize North yeah, Korea. And the phrase in the document is complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Does that mean that the nuclear umbrella that we have over South Korea is on the table for negotiation? No, that means that uh, they're going to get rid of their nuclear weapons. We never even discussed the other. They're going to get rid of their nuclear weapons, George. And I think they want to do it relatively quickly. Now, we're going to see. I mean, they're going to start working on it immediately. We're going to work with South Korea. We're going to work with Japan. We're going to work with China. But uh, it really has been an incredible exercise. You've set the bar for nuclear agreements by criticizing the Iran nuclear deal, said it's the worst deal ever made. Does Terrible that mean deal. that any deal with North Korea has to be tougher than the Iran deal? I don't think a deal could be softer. First of all, we're not paying $150 billion, okay? We're paying nothing from that standpoint other than uh, you will see what happens. I think there's going to be a great partnership with Japan and with South Korea. President Moon has been terrific. But they have to get Prime rid Minister of Prime Minister Abe has been. They terrific. have to get rid of all their nuclear weapons. They've got all to get their rid of. Yeah, food. they will. I think they will. I really believe that he will. I've gotten to Did know him well in a short period of time. Yeah, sure. It's denuking. De I mean, he's denuking the whole place, and he's going to start very quickly. I think he's going to start now. They'll be announcing things over the next few days, talking about other missile sites because they were, as you know, they were sending out a lot of missiles. There was a period of time where I was saying. What are they doing? Every week, it seems, another missile went up. I mean, they're going to be getting rid of sites. Is he going to stop testing? He's going to stop testing. Well, he already has. You know, we have, how many months has it been, George? Seven, where there's been no missiles going up. There's and he's been committed no missiles to not flying starting over. that up again? Oh, he's committed to not do that. It won't be happening. That won't be happening. Uh, he means it. He really wants to do something, I think, terrific for that country. And it's the only way it can be. It's the how only way it can be terrific. Take? Well, you know, if you look at, uh, if you talk to the experts, you can't just do it immediately. Some it takes a period years. of time. Well, somebody said 15 years if you go rapidly. But when you're in a process of doing it, you're really dismantling. In other words, you can't do anything during that period of time. But they have a process for getting rid of nukes that does take, it's not like, oh, gee, we'll get rid of them tomorrow. It just can't be done scientifically. And, but they're going to do it. They're going to start immediately. They've really already started. They blew up a site which, was the real deal site. That was their big site. They've blown it up. They're getting rid of things that haven't been mentioned in the document. They're getting rid of certain missile areas, and they're not going to be sending miss missiles up. They're and not they're doing going research. to announce that and confirm it as well, these additional steps? You say it? The, the North Koreans are going to announce these additional yeah, steps as well? Yeah, they're going to be announcing them very shortly. They might have announced them already, but this came down after we signed. We agreed to that also. Uh, and I'm doing something that I've wanted to do from the beginning. We stopped playing those war games that cost us a fortune. You know, we're spending a fortune every number of months. We're doing war games with South Korea. And I said, what's this costing? We're flying planes in from Guam, and we're bombing empty mountains for practice. And I said, I want to stop that, and I will stop that. And I think it's very provocative, especially, George, since we're getting along. In other words, we're in the process of signing something. Excuse me? Did you me? talk about pulling troops out, U.S. troops we out? We didn't discuss Korea. that, no. But we're not going to play the war games. You know, I wanted to stop the war games. I thought they were very provocative, but I also think they're very expensive. We're running the country properly. I think they're very, very expensive to do it. We have to fly planes in from Guam that's six and a half hours away, big bombers and everything else. I said, who's paying for this? I mean, who pays for, in order to practice. What are the so, kinds of security? so one of the things that I suggested and I want to do is we're going to stop the war games unless for some reason we're unable to go further. What other kinds of security guarantees did you offer? Did you put well, on the Well, we've table? given him, I don't want to talk about it specifically, but we've given him, he's going to be happy. 
His country does love him. His people, you see the fervor. They have a great fervor. They're going to put it together. And I think they're going to end up with a very strong country and a country which has people that they're so hardworking, so industrious. I think if you look at South Korea someday, maybe in the not too distant future, it will be something you like that. You say his people love him. Just a few months ago, you accused him of starving his people. And then listen, here's the rub. Uh, Kim is a brutal dictator. He runs a police state uh, for starvation, labor camps. He's assassinating members of his own family. How do you trust a killer like that? George, I'm given what I'm given, okay? I mean, this is what we have, and this is where we are. And I can only tell you from my experience, and I met him, I've spoken with him, and I've met him, and this was, as you know, started very early, and it's been very intense. Uh, I think that he really wants to do a great job for North Korea. I think he wants to denuke. It's very important. Uh, without that, there's nothing to discuss. That was on the table at the beginning, and you see a total denuclearization of North Korea, so important. And he wants to do the right thing. Now, with all of that being said, I can't talk about it doesn't matter. We, we're starting from scratch. We're starting right now. And we have to get rid of those nuclear weapons. How do you trust him, though? Is he willing to change? Do you believe he's well, changed? Well, you know, over my lifetime, I've done a lot of deals with a lot of people. And sometimes the people that you most distrust turn out to be the most honorable ones. And the people that you do trust, they are not the honorable ones. So uh, we are starting from a very high plane. We're starting from a very good relationship. This has been a very big day in terms of the world. I think it's been maybe, I. A lot of people are saying We're it's historic. Calling it historic. Yeah, even my enemies are calling it historic. And you know, the fact is that we've done something that's very unique. Nobody's met with the family. Nobody at a high level. No president our, has. No president has, certainly. And we've done something that we're very proud of. It's a very strong his, document. His father made agreements with the United States and then said he was going to freeze sure. his nuclear weapons and then backslid didn't keep right. the commitments. Right. And he talks about that. He said that, you know, there are reasons he didn't, because he was let down by the United States. But that's irrelevant. What he's doing, and, and he very much said that. He said, you know, over the years, first of all, they've never gone this far. You know, they've never been at a level like this. And his father never dealt with the president and a lot of other things. But he said, he, it's very much in his mind. He said, we are going to get this done. In the past, we've tried, but it never worked out. And it never did work out. And it was embarrassing, actually, to the United States and to our leadership. This is different, I believe you'll find, in the years to come, George. I think you're going to find this different. How are you going to know he's keeping his word, he's committed to this? Well, we're going to be following things. We're going to be monitoring things. We're dealing with him very on a constant basis. Uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo did a very, very good job, great energy, and they have a great relationship. His counterpart, they have a really good relationship. They're moving along. They're getting it done. I mean, I've been up 24 hours now straight between phone calls and, you know, working it. This is a very, look, this is 72 years we're talking about, and we put it into one very intensive day and some meetings before him. And, uh, but a lot of people look at Kim Jong-un and say there is no way he is ever giving up those nuclear weapons. That's why he survives. That's why he was in this room today. Well, I think we have to disagree. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Or I would have respectfully, you know, I would have shaken his hand. I would have said, listen, I'll see you sometime. But I wouldn't have had any interest. No, this was very important. It's in the first paragraph. And it says complete, total denuclearization. Without that, I wouldn't have been interested. Uh, I believe that he wants to get it done. You trust him? I do trust him, yeah. Now, will I come back to you in a year and you'll be interviewing? I'll say, gee, I made a mistake. That's always possible. You know, we're dealing at a very high level. A lot of things can change. A lot of things are possible. He trusts me, I believe. I really do. I mean, he said openly, and he said it to a couple of reporters that were with him, that he knows that no other president ever could have done this. I mean, no other pre He knows the presidents. He knows who we had in front of me. He said no other president could have done this. I think he trusts me, and I trust him. Ronald Reagan said trust but verify. Yeah. How do you verify this commitment? Well, we're going to be verifying, and we're going to be working with them, and it's going to be much more open than it is right now. Right now, it's obviously very close. It's a closed society. We know very little about, you know, if you ask intelligence, they will tell you probably they know less about this area of the world than they do any place anywhere in the world. We're going to be working very closely with them. We've developed great relationships at different levels. 
Uh, Mike Pompeo's got really very good, strong relationships, and others have also. Uh, today, we introduced them to John Bolton, which was a very interesting thing. And he says, "How do you know Kim that, Jong in his line? His lips are moving." By the end of that conversation, it was good. I think they have good trust. Final question: When is Kim coming to the White House? Well, I want to get it along. I want the process to start. I want to see some real work going on, which I believe I will. And I would love to have him at the White House, whatever it takes. And I would love to have him at the White House. And I think he'd love to be there. And at a certain point, when it's all complete, I'd love to be there. And guys, you can see from that area, from that area, those exchanges I had with President Trump, how much he is banking on this personal relationship with Kim Jong Un. What a contrast to the words he used about Kim Jong Un just a few months ago. He says he trusts him. He says Kim Jong Un means it when he says he's going to get rid of the nuclear weapons. Of course, we are all waiting to see if that is really true. If Kim Jong Un is going to do what his father didn't do, what his grandfather didn't do. But right now, we know that President Trump. Is believes that that personal relationship has started something new between the U.S. and North Korea. Time will tell if he's right. Time will tell. It's obvious that there is there is does appear to be trust there. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.